Uh, that's not the answer. Right, right. Then we can we simplify that to zero point or negative zero point eight six x right. equals five point one six. So now we need zero point eight six and five point one six. Right. So what do we do? Times. Well, this is times already. Right divided here. by. Right. Five point one six. Oh, uh, 5.16. Right, 5.16 divided by. Oh. Divided by. 0 0.86. 6. Okay. If I remember, we divided by negative. Negative 6. Right. You did it. Oh, you see, the, we did it right. Oh my god. You need to translate this word problem into an equation and solve it. The do nothing duo wants to see how many grains of sand can fit into a thimble. If do nothing number one is putting grains inside the thimble at a rate of 10 per minute, and do nothing number two is putting grains inside the thimble at a rate of 12 per minute, how many minutes will it take the two of them together to put 11,440 grains inside the thimble? <laughs> Number one can put in 10 X grains, and number two can put in 12 X grains. So you would d divide that? Well, what's our equation? We can set up our equation first. So we have, it says, the first guy does 10 in a minute. Right. So 10, we want to know how many minutes, so that's X. Right. So 10 X, and the second guy does 12 X, so 10 X plus 12 X equal to uh, 11 yeah. 11 four, four. so now we need to solve this equation so tw 10 and 12 okay what's that is that divided by no, you, you add the 10 and the 12, because it's 10x plus 12x, and they both have x's, so you can add them together. 22! Right, okay, so now you have 22x equals 11, 4, 4, oh. Well, I couldn't add an x to it, so... Right, you don't need to worry about putting an x on the calculator. You right, but you can put it on the pa paper. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta remember that. Right. You know, if the, both the numbers have an x, you can add them together, but if right. only one of them has an x, you can't add them together. Right. So, so we have 22x equals 11,440. So now we need to solve for x. So, 22 divided by 1140. Right, and then the other way around. 1140 times. No, divided by. Uh, it's two fours, sorry. Do it, try again. 11440. There you go. One one four four zero. Yeah. Divided by twenty two. Right. Five hundred and twenty minutes. Yep. You did it. Alright. Now we're going to the next one. We have advanced so far into this. Well, we don't want to. Go to the next one, yeah. We don't want to add it. I got plenty of time. <laughs> well, it's at 17. No. They still have it set in the mountain. For no apparent reason. I kind of wish they'd change this in the mountain time. We still have the problem in the last lesson involving wheels. Remember, Joe could wash three cars per hour, and Steve could wash two cars per hour. And then the question was, how long did it take the guys working together to wash 20 cars? Well, let's look at another version of that problem. That's old. That's let's last lesson. The guys work more slowly. Say, for instance, that Joe took four hours to wash just one car, and Steve took six hours to wash one car. Man! How long would it take them then to wash 20 cars? Let's solve that problem. 
the first step is There's no way. the thing we're trying to find. So x has to equal the number of hours that they have to work to wash 20 cars. And now let's set up the equation in words. It will be just like before. The number of cars that Joe washes plus the number of cars that Steve washes has to equal 20 cars. And then we need to write expressions for each of these. The number of cars that Joe washes, do you remember how we wrote an expression for this in the last lesson? It was Joe's rate, how many cars he could wash per hour, multiplied by the time he's going to work, the time he's going to wash cars, which is x. And then in the last lesson, Joe's rate was 3 cars per hour, and so it was 3 times x, or just 3x. But here's the question, what's Joe's rate in this problem? It's not 4, because Joe can't wash 4 cars per hour. It actually takes him four hours just to wash one car. He's really slow now. So what we have to do is figure out how much of a car he can do in just one hour. And it's going to be less than one car. It's a fraction of a car. Turns out Joe can wash one-fourth of a car in one hour. And that makes sense because then in four hours, he'll have just a single car washed. He'll finally have washed a whole car. And so... Joe's rate doesn't take me that long to wash our one car. Fourth. One fourth of a car per hour. And we multiply one fourth by x, the amount of time that he's going to work, to get the expression for the number of cars that Joe washes. So it's one fourth x. And then we can do the same thing to get the expression for the number of cars that Steve washes. Steve takes six hours to wash just a single car. He's even slower than Joe. So after one hour, what fraction of a car will Steve have washed? See if you can figure that out. Well. Six-fourths, maybe? Well, this here it's saying that it takes him four hours to wash one car. Right. And it takes Steve six hours. Right. So after one hour, so theoretically, if you take, if you wash one car, it takes you four hours. Right. Then wants to know how much you're going to wash in one hour, you divide, you're dividing four hours by four to get one hour. Right. So this is what it's doing here, it's saying, it, you wash one car divided by four is going to be one fourth. Right. So for Steve, it says it takes six hours to wash one car. Right. So divide six hours by six. You get one hour, right? Right. So you do the same thing. You divide one car by six. So you get one over what? One divided by six. So it's one on top and a six on bottom. Awesome. Nice. So Steve's rate is one sixth of a car per hour. And then when we multiply one sixth by x, and that's the amount of time that he's going to work, we get one sixth x for the number of cars that he'll wash in x hours. So that right. in the equation. And then the one force. Is just 20. Put that. So you would do this and this yeah. equals twenty. Good. Yeah. This is our equation. Now let's go ahead and solve. We have two x terms, so we need to combine these first before we can undo. Right. So remember how it works? We just add their coefficients. One fourth plus one sixth. But we need to get a common denominator, actually, before we can add. The lowest common denominator here is 12. So what we do is multiply the top and bottom of 1 fourth by 3. That will change the denominator of that fraction to 12. And then we multiply the top and bottom of 1 sixth by 2. Why don't you do all of these multiplications and fill in the numbers? Hey, he changed my answer. Not cool. So, do this and this. Yeah. You were just, we were just going to find that common denominator so we can add <coughs> the fractions together. Well, <coughs> <coughs> um, so that would be, that's story, mm -hmm. 12, 2, 12. Right, so put that in. I can't remember that story. Three, so three goes on top. It's twelve. Right. 
and then two. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice. Now we're ready to combine. Good job. The coefficients. Go ahead and do that. Hmm. That sits over twelve. Plus two. Plus three. Plus three. Five over twelve. So the x terms combine to get 5 twelfths x. And then now we can undo. We need to divide both sides by 5 twelfths to undo the multiplication. What does the left side equal now? Hmm. You have x times 5 twelfths divided by 5 twelfths. So they're just canceling them out. Zero? Yeah, but you saw the x left there, so... All you're doing there is just canceling those out. What? So you're, you're just left with X. Good. And then the next step is you need to do the calculation on the right. You need to invert and multiply here. Why don't you do the inverting step? Oh my. So just flip 5 twelfths. So instead of being divided by 5 twelfths, it's times, yeah, 12 fifths. Good. Now go ahead and multiply these, and make sure you reduce your answer fully. Oh my! Alright, so let's reduce first. So you have 20 for 1 times 12 over 5. Right. So 5 can go into 20, right? Right. Okay, so just 5 go into 20. 4? Right. So oh. that can be divided by 5, and you get 4, and that can be divided by 5, and you get 1. So really, you just need 4 times 12. Right. What's 4 times 12? 3! 4 times 12. 4, 8, 12. Oh, I can't. Well, what's 4 times 11? Do you remember? Nope. Do you remember the rule on multiplying stuff by 11? Right, it's going to equal the same thing. Right, so it's 4 times 11. 44? Right, so 44. So 4 times 12 is going to be... 55. Four. No, 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 4 times 12 is going to be 4 more from 44. Right, because you have 4 times right. 11 is 11. Four. 47? So it's 44. Now you need to do 44 plus 4. 48? Yeah, 48. That's the answer? So the solution to the equation is 48, and that means it would take Joe and Steve 48 hours to watch 20 cars, which is pretty long. Two wow! That's an all-nighter. One of the reasons Two I wanted days. to show you that example, do that again with different rates, was I wanted you to see that rates are given in problems in different ways. The problem didn't say how many cars each of them could wash in one hour. It told how long it took them to wash a single car. Joe needed four hours to wash a single car, and Steve needed six hours. That's not the normal way a rate is given. Usually it's three cars per hour or two cars per hour or something right. like that. And when you have a rate that's given differently like this, what you have to do is figure out the rate per hour. You have to calculate that yourself. It turns out you can always figure out a rate by just dividing the amount of work completed of cars washed or whatever it is, you divide that amount by the time that it took. If you're given that information, then you can calculate the rate. So let's just do another rate calculation. What if Joe had been able to wash 14 cars in two hours? What if the problem had told us that? Well, in that case, then we could have calculated his rate like this. We could have said the amount completed is 14, 14 cars. That goes in the top of the, of the fraction, and then the time it took was two hours, and so you put two in the bottom of the fraction. Amount completed, 14. Over two. two. And then you divide that. Why don't you go ahead and divide 14 by two? 12, 14. That is seven. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so Joe's rate would have been seven cars per hour. Right. That's how you calculate. Now, what if Joe had only been able to wash three cars in nine hours? What if that had been the information given in the problem? Well, hmm. Then his rate would have been three divided by nine.
see, it would have been in the amount completed. Which is three. Completed divided by the time it took. And then that's a fraction, but it will reduce. What is three ninths reduced to? Am I right? What is three ninths reduced to? Two ninths? No, like what can you divide each number by? Three? Right. So what's three divided by three? One. Okay, so you have a one on top. One, one over nine. Now what's nine divided by three? Sorry. Yeah, so one over three. Exactly. And so in that case, Joe's rate would have been one third of a car per hour. That's how you calculate a rate. You just take the amount that the person can complete, number of cars or whatever, and divide it by how long it took, and then you can get the rate. If the rate's not given to you in a simple way, the way it was in the last problem, where it just says three cars per hour. Ready? Yeah. So I'm tired. Yeah, I've had a long day. Ah, so have I. But, it's okay. You need to tell whether these two expressions are equivalent. One-third x plus one-third x and two-thirds x. Oh my. Okay, so what can you do with one third x plus one third x? You can simplify that, right? Right. So what's one third plus one third? One and one is one, three and three is nine. You're adding though, not multiplying. Oh. You're adding one over three plus one over three. Well, it would it would be three over. One times one is two. Yeah, it's plus. One plus one. What's one plus one? Two. Right. And then you're three. Two over three. Right. And so. X. Yeah. And so it's two, three, X. Yes. Two, three, X. Yeah. You got it. Oh, yeah. I would hate to get the first one wrong. <laughs> huh. You need to tell whether these two expressions are equivalent. Negative seven x no. and negative twelve mm -mm. times five x times one fourth. It just looks wrong. <laughs> it looks completely wrong. Oh, uh, how can you tell? It just looks it. I mean, that doesn't even. It looks like cavemen wrote it. Well, go ahead and work out the thing on the right. So you can be sure. I'm gonna click yes. You think they're equivalent? Perfect. Well, I did the right thing. Yeah, yeah, lucky. It takes the dental hygienist two minutes to clean a tooth. Find the rate per minute at which he cleans teeth. You think it's less? Yeah, you think I made sure your answer was fully reduced. Come on! The rate equals the amount completed divided by the time it took. Takes the dental hygienist two minutes. <gasps> Better not. To clean a tooth. Um. Hmm. 